Hello, welcome to Am I Neurodivergent, a video series recapping my unexpected autism and ADHD year. So, chapter 13, week 13, roughly three months after self-diagnosing, having had a week and a bit to kind of start to process my formal ASD diagnosis, I made the decision to tell family and close friends, and that's the topic of this week's video, whether to tell friends and family or whether to keep it to yourself. <clears throat> For some people, whether you've gone through the rigmarole of getting a formal diagnosis or whether you've just comfortably self-diagnosed, some people just want the validation of knowing for themselves that there was nothing ever wrong with them. Like I've said before in these uh, videos, now knowing that you've just been wired differently. And knowing and just keeping that information to yourself is 100% fine and valid. For me, it was weird. I wanted to tell people. After I'd processed it myself for a few days and had the validation of getting an autism diagnosis to confirm the doubts I still had, I kind of I couldn't wait. I was definitely nervous about doing it, but I wanted to do it. You know that <clears throat> weird neurodivergent light switch? In a split second, you can go from mega secretive and defensive about yourself, just completely clamming up if someone dares to ask you how your weekend was, to the next moment just uncomfortably oversharing personal details about yourself to the extent people start backing away towards an exit. Um, yeah, that, that pretty much happened on a grand scale with me and my diagnosis. From never really talking about mental health and anxiety, and if I was struggling at all, I just started bombarding friends and family post-diagnosis with, hey, guess what? This is why I was struggling so bad all this time. And most of them were like, oh, okay, cool. Wait, you were struggling? I had no idea, and life just continued. So it was it was a bit of a anticlimax uh, in some senses. So uh, this week, I'm looking at the pros and cons of letting people know that you're on the autism spectrum, and a few ideas about how you might do it if that's something that you're you're anxious about. Um, so yeah, telling friends, family, and work colleagues. Actually, work colleagues is kind of a a bigger thing that gets into the realm of reasonable workplace adjustments and employment rights. I'm going to I'm gonna leave that for a later video and stick with where I was on the journey during week 13, which was specifically telling friends and family. Right, the pros of letting people you're close to know you're on the autism spectrum. Number one, it's empowering. If you're realising you're autistic or otherwise neurodivergent as an adult, you've probably been masking uh, for most of your life. Telling people you're autistic is probably going to be your first experience of starting to take that mask off, and it feels great. For me, it felt like taking 20 layers of suffocating armour off. I think when you mask and try to hide your challenges for so long, you build up layers and layers of kind of shame and worry that you're about to be found out and exposed somehow. I'm not going to pretend that learn shame is going to go away overnight, not by a long shot, but by telling people this is you now and was you all along, it kind of instantly sheds that first layer of the imposter syndrome shame and gets you started out on a very long, hopefully not that long, journey towards accepting yourself and feeling better about yourself and having some self-worth, I guess. You're being completely honest, maybe for the first time, and kind of reintroducing yourself to the world, you've got a kind of second chance to be you. And honestly, for me, that felt massively liberating. And I just wanted to grab it without much hesitation or embarrassment and, and start that new chapter as soon as possible. Uh, number two pro, telling people will help them know and understand you better. It's absolutely normal to be nervous about telling people, like predictability is a big thing for us, right? and you don't know how someone's gonna to react to this. So it can be pretty nerve shredding, but surprise, some of those weird quirks that infuriated you about yourself, very probably infuriated or at least confused other people too. 
now there's a legitimate reason for all those quirks and not just you being difficult for the sake of being difficult. So armed with more knowledge, people might be more understanding of those quirks and more understanding of you, how you are, and what you need to be your best self. Cons of letting people know. Number one, being invalidated by people who think they know better than you or know better than other actually autistic people or know better than medical experts. Expect at least one blunt, no you're not, or one of what I thought was a good friend when I told him, which was, I looked into autism a while back myself, don't they think it's all just bullshit now? Or the classic, well-meaning, but crushingly minimizing, and let's, let's say it all together, everybody's a little bit on the spectrum, right? Um, how about this one that many, many of us will have had? Uh, you don't look autistic. My friend's kid's autistic, and you're nothing like them. Or how about, no, I don't think that can be right, but if you are, you must be very high functioning. Uh, I would never have guessed from speaking to you that you're autistic. Look, all of those will feel like a kick in the balls or a kick in the ovaries, uh, and you, ca you can't predict how people will respond, but people's responses are their responses. Just try not to hold a grudge or feel annoyed with them. If, if you get through disclosure, without anyone being actively hostile to you, it's probably on balance gone pretty well, if not exactly how you'd hoped. Uh, con number two, almost the opposite, which is getting too validated, like in an overly patronizing way, like comments like, oh, that's amazing, you've done so well for yourself, you should be so proud, haven't you done well, you little scrapper? Like, I don't suddenly have a brain injury, I'm the same person I was yesterday. People in this space might feel the need to start giving you advice on how to do things better or differently and <clears throat> act like a bit of a know-it-all with suggestions that, that just aren't the right advice for you, no matter how well-meaning a place it might come from. Again, you can't control people's reactions, so don't get cross, just try to smile and say thank you. Con number three is feeling judged. Oh, you're different now. I always thought you were a bit odd, and now I see you actually are odd, and I weirdly feel less comfortable around you. It's, it's a risk. People do have preconceived notions about autism, and there's still, unfortunately, a stigma there for some people. Oh, you lack empathy. You're incapable of seeing other people's points of view. You must be very rigid and inflexible and infuriating to be around. If you get this from people, don't even worry about it. Like, they're probably not going to wind up being long-term members of your bubble. Some people are friends for a lifetime, some people are friends for a season, right? If it's your family being this judgy, then sorry, that's crushing. Con number four is getting bounced into giving more information than you're ready to share. A disadvantage of letting people know immediately after, or soon after, um, you know, are that depending on where you are on the self-discovery journey, you may not know that much about autism and the autism spectrum just yet, other than that you're on it and it somehow feels right to know that about yourself. You may also feel a little bit unsure about your diagnosis still, the inward-facing imposter syndrome that I kind of talked about in, in Chapter 7 can kick in. People you tell will often be positive but curious to know more, and you may not have much knowledge to share at this point, so you might feel kind of wrong-footed and ill-informed about yourself and about your condition. So sometimes taking a bit more time to find out more and do your own research before disclosing could be a helpful thing. Um, if, if in doubt and you're in this situation, just talk about yourself though, and try to be unguarded and excited and curious. Like, if you pitch it as a positive development in your life, others will probably receive the news as a positive development in your life. If you pitch it as a confusing disaster to those you know, then that's probably how it will be regarded. So, 
if you're still in a bit of a confused state or freaking out or feeling negative or angry or depressed or in denial about being on the spectrum, it's probably not the best time to come out about it publicly, so to speak, um, other than to those who you 100% know will be there for you and, and the most likely to help you through the rough patch you're likely still going through. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. I was going to do a bit on picking an appropriately private and quiet place to tell people, but let's be realistic. If, you, if you're if you autistic, you're 100% going to tell people by text or email in a painstakingly constructed lengthy essay about yourself, aren't you? The chances of you spontaneously picking up the phone to do this or breezily dropping in on someone at their house and winging it are pretty much slim to zero, right? So you do you. Write it out and then rewrite it 20 times until you're happy with your script and then watch them try to immediately call you to chat about it, the talky bastards. If you are going to do it verbally, first of all, good luck. And second of all, set it up. Tell them you've got something important you want to talk to them about and ask them when they'd have time for a proper chat with you. If you don't want to delve straight in, because it's a it's a big thing, maybe start by talking about some of the things you can struggle with, some of the things that have bothered you for a while and you wanted to understand why you struggled with them and that you now know are because you're autistic, if that makes sense, for example. Or you can talk about the relief of knowing uh, there was an explanation that there wasn't anything wrong with you. Maybe talk a little about what neurodivergence is if they don't know that it's just a simple difference in, in the way the brain's wired for comprehending, processing and communicating information uh, from and to the outside world. That one in seven people are neurodivergent, one in a hundred are on the autism spectrum um, and that it's way more common than people realise and there's a, there's a ton of undiagnosed people out there and that you've been one of them your, your whole life. Or you can just start by asking them if they know much about autism and go from there. That way, if they do turn out to be massively prejudiced and show themselves up to be a bit of a, an asshole, you can back away slowly towards the door and just save yourself the trouble of continuing that relationship. Um, I jest, but not really. Um, hopefully, they'll tell you a little bit about what they do know and you can frame the subsequent conversation around that framework and about what the experience of autism is like for you based on based on that. Like I've said before, every single autistic person experiences autism slightly differently based on who they are, the life they've lived, the experiences they've they've had. I guess I would advise using real world examples of things that have happened to you that you now realize were your autism to help people who've known you understand it better. An example I used when I was telling um, one particular friend, a few years previously when I was on a, a break from work, I'd volunteered for my local Green Party during elections. I was really enthused to make a difference and push myself way out of my comfort zone to go along and attend a local meeting on my own with a bunch of strangers. I got loaded up with flyers and badges and bullet points and told to go and speak to commuters at the tube station and get people signed up and supporting us. Um, I tried. I took those flyers to that tube station with every intention of doing my bit for party and planet, then took one look at how busy and chaotic the whole scene was, walked right past, took my green badge off, hid my clipboard, found a quiet side street, stood there alone for an hour, frozen to the spot, and then went home, having spoken to no one and just feeling utterly defeated and contemptuous of myself. This is a few years back before I'd even considered I might be autistic and, and my conclusion then was I thought I was just a peculiar street hider with crippling social anxiety and guess what? It turns out I was just autistic and I find the thought of forcefully interjecting myself unbidden into someone else's day with an immediate expectation I then perform a potentially hostile two-way conversation with a stranger, completely unthinkable and unachievable. I want to contribute to society and make the world a better place. Excellent, pleased to have you. This is how you do that. Oh, okay. Nope. Anyway, I 
digress, but um, yeah, personal story, something weird about you that now to you, knowing you're autistic, makes sense and hopefully makes you hate yourself less. Um, that's got to be a winner, right? Um, if you're talking to a parent or someone who knew you as a kid, it could be something like, Remember all that time I spent alone as a kid categorising Thundercats and Transformers and Action Force and summarising all their backstories rather than playing in the park with the kids outside like a normal. Remember how I'd separate out and line up my food. Yeah, stuff like that can help make it obvious in retrospect. But also remember, share positives too, not just the challenges and struggles and quirks. Just Paint a picture of you, I guess, when you're telling people to, to not freak people out and not make them worry too much about you, but it's, it's a balance. I shared, I shared a bunch of common autistic strengths in chapter six of this series, and you're, you've probably got a ton of them you can pull examples out of. Attention to detail, hyper-focus, systematizing information, sense of justice and fairness, all, all that good stuff. Give people examples of how your autism has helped positively forge you into the person you are too, as well as all the challenges it, it gives you underneath the surface. <clears throat> Another thing to avoid, and this is quite a big one for quite a lot of us, I think, A thing to avoid is spite sharing, and what I mean by that is <clears throat> telling people you're autistic as an I told you so. I told you I needed help, I told you I wasn't weird, I told you I wasn't lazy. It's really common, particularly with an adult diagnosis, to feel grief about the lack of support you've had in your life up till now, when you've been struggling. Often this grief turns to anger against figures of authority from when you were younger, primarily parents or teachers who you think should have done better by you or supported you more. Don't share your diagnosis to prove a point and to teach people a lesson about how they've let the younger you down. You might want to, you might want to really badly, but don't. Hurting someone back whom you feel has hurt you just doubles the hurt in your bubble. It's better to say nothing until you're ready to share it with love and positivity. Um, don't disclose in anger, basically. If you need some therapy to let go of some anger before you tell people, I get it. It will be worth the money. Then, if people do feel guilt or shame about having not realised or given you the support you needed previously, you're much more likely to be able to say that it's okay, that no one realised what was wrong back then, but you do now, and now is when you could use their understanding and, and support. Guaranteed the second conversation is going to go better for all parties, including you, than the other angry conversation. Um, this all might seem like more cons than pros around telling people you're autistic, um, or at least more risks than obvious wins to it, but honestly, um, the pros, empowerment, taking control of your own narrative, being honest and authentic and having people understand you better probably outweigh even double the amount of possible cons I've listed here. My honest advice is buckle up and do it and fuck them if they're not on board with you. Just try not to have any preconceived notions and try to go into it with no expectations. Remember that whomever you're telling, their reaction says something about them, not about you. And while you might be disappointed by their reaction, if they don't get it right in quite the way you were wanting, that reaction sits with them, not with you. Forgive them and let the way they react sit with them. You're going to be just fine. You're going to be better than you were previously, regardless of how someone else reacts. If they let themselves down in the way they react, then so be it. Feel bad for them, but not for you. Put some distance in and let them reflect and respond later if they need to. Um, often, and this may come as a shock to some of us, but people just won't really care or be that interested. It's earth shattering to you to have your whole conception of yourself turned upside down. But to most people, this will not really feel like the seismic new dawn it feels like to you. And it kind of doesn't matter. It shouldn't be. It's your inner life and inner understanding of yourself, not theirs. However people react, you're now living your authentic life and being the authentic you. You've turned a page. You're driving a different car. 
you just know now you're driving a stick shift, not a automatic. Um, once you get used to being the new you and learning the extent of the agency you actually have over yourself and the world around you, you're going to realize maybe for the first time that you can be a driver, not a passenger from now on. And maybe, just maybe, you can start living the life you were supposed to be living with a kind of unstoppable feeling of being able to do it. So yeah, buckle up. Um, you all rock. Um, and there's a ride to be had. Um, I don't mean for this to end like a little pep rally, but um, yeah, we are where we are. Um, please do like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you think it's useful. Um, good luck with telling people if that's where you are on your journey, and I'll see you next Sunday for more of this crazy journey. Cheers!